So it's pretty late right now, guys. Pond that out real quick. Coming down the list here and seeing the CRV K24 base map. You guys can see for, it's for the long block. So K and N intake, stock header and cat. I think I'm gonna run this one when I have my K24 swapped in. Glad to see that I have something to start the car with. It is 27 degrees out guys right now. Cold morning out here in Connecticut, New England. So I'm waiting for it to kind of warm up a little bit. I gotta go grab my flywheel. I gotta get a coffee real quick and then to be wrenching on the K24. All right, current progress guys, getting midnight wash because it's been like three weeks since I actually washed this thing. Got my Cumbies coffee right here, hazelnut. If you guys remember JP with the boosted FG2 SI, I'm gonna be going to his house today to grab a flywheel real quick, a stock K20Z3 flywheel, so that I can bolt that onto the K24 form a compression test, because when the starter protrudes, the gear on the starter needs to activate another gearing of the flywheel so it can spin the crank. See? So Picking up the K20Z3, we gotta use flywheel right here, but all I'm gonna do is just clean it up a little bit, and then I'll be able to mount it right onto the K24 so I can perform the compression test so got a really good deal on it shout out to this guy right here jp what what's goody you guys can see his build i was hoping i would be able to get a ride in this thing today but fortunately it's uh being winterized yeah, so cool. it is what it is all right guys currently headed home the flywheel right here obviously it's used it has some rust on it and stuff but i'm gonna clean this thing up get it resurfaced eventually and i don't need it to be in good condition for today because all we're doing is bolting it onto the motor. Today, the trick is going to be getting this bad boy off right here. And you could pretty much, I don't know, I call it the automatic plate, transmission plate, torque converter, whatever you want to call it. But it's got eight flywheel bolts on there technically. Even when I put the flywheel on, the starter gear will come out and line up with the starter so I don't have to put spacers on it. So I had to run out to the store yesterday, one of these, because I didn't have a 17 millimeter 12 point side. So you need these for pretty much all Honda flywheel bolts, at least the K-series. You guys can tell this was off of an automatic vehicle. When they have a plate on there, technically, they're mainly off of an automatic transmission. So my setup right here, I have the I have an extension, 3 8 drive extension, jammed in to the, you can't really see it down there, but on the block itself, there's spots where you can jam in bars. The bolts have like this weird freaking, this weird 12 point like head on them. And it's really a pain in the balls. I wish they would make it like a standard six point, but it is what it is. I think we're good to go. I marked the starter right here. Yo, your boy, I'm hyped right now, but I'm also nervous at the same time. Like this is my first compression test. It's a used motor. I really don't know what to expect. I don't know, man. Got the K20 flywheel on there and the bolts i didn't go too tight but i went tight enough to where this thing doesn't freaking back off and screw up the starter teeth but i'm gonna get ready i gotta get the battery ready over here i'm gonna bring the d series over here all right guys got the d17 over here my jumper cables right here but before i go ahead and jump the starter i need to well obviously let's remove this but before, you're going to call me crazy, but before I do that, I'm going to remove the valve cover and I'm actually going to put some oil on the camshafts and stuff 
just to get some lubrication for when the motor is turning and rotating because you don't really want to rotate a motor with dry internals it's not really beneficial for it and uh i'm super anal and this is my first time doing this so try not to roast me too bad in the comments but if you roast me whatever man it's all good all you At least the internals are still lubricated, which is good. I won't be really cranking this motor on a dry startup. So I'm literally just going to put some oil along the camshafts right here. Using some regular 5W30 oil from Honda. Right, so for the information that I gathered up on what you need to do a compression test on an engine that is outside of a vehicle, you're going to need a battery, you're going to need jumper cables, obviously you can see, positive, negative, you're going to have your compression test kit, this is a Harbor Freight one, and you're going to have like a insulated copper jumper wire, and this is going to be for the positive, but obviously we have our original starter, and then we have a flywheel. Now this is a K24 block with a K20 flywheel. So this starter should engage this flywheel, hopefully. Hopefully nothing happens, we'll see what happens. But you need your flywheel, starter, jumper wire. All right, so that's tightened down right there, guys. Hopefully this works. I'm gonna pop out the spark plug for cylinder number one real quick. I forgot to mention is a magnetic spark plug socket right here, guys. This thing is gonna make your life a lot easier. Uh, extension and then your preferred ratchet of choice. Our compression test kit, hose right here, gauge, and then I believe the one I was using last time was this one right here. All right, so we'll hook our gauge in in a second. This, I wanna just make sure this thing threads down in here. And in this instance, it does. So we're just gonna tighten that thing up. Let's connect our gauge like so. And we can have this thing just hanging right now. Dude, I, I think I might have to take a fear dump real quick. <laughs> I'm serious, guys, like, I'm nervous. Like, I'm nervous as hell right now because this pretty much determines whether or not I wasted my time going to get the motor and uh, whether or not I wasted my time putting the hours into pretty much tearing this thing down, you know? I'm not going to order anything that I need for maintenance until this compression test checks positive. So we're going to go ahead and start this thing up here and pretty much see what we have for a result, guys. I stuck it in between these two studs. And then this is our reset button right here, I'm pretty sure, so. Had a little complication. I forgot to remove the boot for this little piece right here. And I, I couldn't, I was like, dude, why is this thing not going? And I was sticking the wire, this little connector here into there and it wasn't touching this. Okay, cylinder number two, guys. This is, this is crazy, man. All right, guys, after fixing my connection right here, you guys can see I found the original starter stuff. So we're gonna try this one, and then I beefed up the uh, the positive cable starter right there. So that's pretty beefy copper wire. Hopefully this connection will give me a better ground to the starter, and uh, let's see what happens, guys. So we're gonna touch this with this right here. All right, so as you guys can see, I just did cylinder number three, and the compression is good. So I currently have a motor with two shot compression uh, cylinders. Gonna do number four now.
I'm giving it one more shot guys so what i'm gonna do i did the dry test i'm gonna do a wet test now and what what that is is pretty much i just learned something new myself two capfuls of oil and literally dump them into each cylinder just to get some lubrication on the piston rings and the the whole like cylinder walls you're gonna do a wet compression test on cylinder number one right now number two right here One eighty-ish cylinder number three right there, two ten as you can see, which is cylinder number four. One ninety-ish. I move the ground on the actual starter instead of having it on the block too. I feel like that helps a lot. So you guys can see my setup right there. Literally huge copper wire for the positive, and then I have my little jumper wire which came on the K24. Uh, the plan is I have a I have a warranty still. I'm not going to tell you that the motor is 100% right now because you know, it has been sitting for a while. No shade to JDM Depot at all. The goal with this K24 is not to like make it um, you know, something that I dump all my money into, every check into, a budget build and something to have fun with. So, I'm setting a $1500 limit and remember, never stop wrenching.